Unbelievable images, and we've seen some cool images also this weekend from the supercars with a wild race yesterday, 200 kilometres and 60 laps. And here's where we are racing, thanks to Pete's heart. 3.3 kilometres and 14 turns around here with a top speed of just on 250 odd kilometres an hour and an average speed that's rather slow because of the complexity of all of those turns from turn two through to turn nine. It's about 145 kilometres per hour, but turned on a big show yesterday and it's going to do exactly the same today. There's a couple of passing points there, up into turn 11, into turn one and down into the final turn complex at turn 12 as well. And we see lots of unforced errors with the shape of the road in the middle. And we are about to see our Boost Mobile shoot out. Exit release car 55. Our top 10 cars get to do their released. thing. And the first one out is Thomas Randall, 28 years of age from Melbourne for Castrol Racing and Tickford. He did a 1 minute 27.44. Now, earlier, if you were watching our qualifying, there was a little bit of wet area on the fringes of the racetrack here and there. It just took a bit of the steam out of the ultimate speed, but it was still incredibly close across the top 10 players. Yesterday, 12th in the race, qualified 11th. He missed out on the top 10 shootout by a tiny, tiny whisker. It's 13th in the championship hunt at the moment. He did cop a penalty yesterday, Mark. A contact down at turn one on lap one with Brock Feeney that had Brock pointing in the wrong direction after a very strong run in the opening event also at the Bathurst 500 earlier in the year where he jumped out of the blocks and grabbed the fourth position. So we know this guy's got pace. He's been working on this racetrack at his sim back home in Melbourne. He also raced the Toyota Racing Series up in Wheeler here back in the day. He got some podiums as well. So he has had some exposure to the car and the track. And he is now out there trying to get some temperature and pressure up into those tyres, get those brakes working and try and guesstimate the perfect lap where he's got to stand on it now for 14 turns. And he was able to just knock off his teammate Cam Waters in qualifying. This is Thomas Randall's 11th shootout and it's the first one on New Zealand soil. So let's see what this does now. See how aggressively he's warming up that front tyre and the whole key we heard Greg Murphy and Garth Tander talking about it a second ago. The whole key to this is making sure the front tyre is up to start the lap without hurting the rear tyre too much for the closing sector of this very complex layout. Focusing now on the exit speed coming out of the final corner into the pit straight. It's a short, sharp run down here into this long 180 degree left hander. Second gear through here. It's about 65 kilometres an hour at its slowest point pausing on the throttle for turn two and using the curve. Getting all the way to the left on top of the green concrete at turn three, kissing the curve at turn four. Short little run here into five that goes on and on and on and turns back on itself. Patience with the throttle, not too much wheel spin out the other side in second gear and launches it off towards the mid complex here at turn seven. A Little bit of camber on the road here to help the cause, tucks that front left in there and ideally positioned out the other side. First intermediate split is a 29-3 for Randall. And you can just see from that bird's eye view from the front of the Castrol Mustang, the number of surface changes. On the racing line, there are 30 different surfaces to deal with. And this surface here is the lowest grip of the lot. He gets it stopped, but only just. It locked the rear wheels at the little kick. He gathered it back up, made the apex nicely, and then was just trying to reduce the amount of oversteer and wheel spin coming onto this long straight. Roughly 250k here, 70 metres a second at the end of this run into the final chicane. Feeds it another gear to get it back to second. It just pushed a little bit through the right-hander at 13. This is going to give us an indication of what the track conditions like. And up comes our first number, and it's a 27-3. And that's actually a tenth faster than he yeah, went in qualifying good earlier today. Good so those conditions may be just marginally better. There is direct sunlight on the track, hallelujah, compared to yesterday, where it was incredibly <laughs> wet. Replay image of it just kicking the tail ever so slightly sideways on the exit of turn eight. And here he is kissing that apex on the inside on the approach to turn 11. And ran it round the inside. Thomas is listening in the background. What did you think of the lap? Yeah, it was uh, a bit sl slippery than I was expecting, actually. So it was pretty much matching my uh, quality time up until the last sector. And yeah, went a little bit hot at turn 12, but yeah, we'll see where it puts us. Uh, we can't finish any worse than 10th, so hopefully we can move up a few spots. Have a good run this afternoon. Thanks, Thomas. Thanks, Neil. Cheers.
was a nice quality lap, that one. No obvious mistakes and a bit of aggression there at turn 12. This man was a quiet achiever yesterday. He came home in fifth place for TFH Hire and Erebus Motorsport in the Chevy Camaro. Jack LeBrock, 31, living in Brisbane. Car number nine, one minute 27.4. Fifth yesterday, qualified 16, so great progression through the field. Sitting eighth in the championship and opens his account on the run towards turn number one. Yeah, Thomas did confirm that he just ran a little wide down there at turn 12, so he's a bit hungry down there. Does that mean there's a tiny little bit left if Jack can stitch it all together here? But the track's got some sunlight on it at the moment. Perfect set of tyres. There's plenty of them now today because everybody was on wets yesterday, so there's an opportunity to make sure that in the race today that they're all gripped up throughout the day. So far, so good for Jack LeBrock. And it is a 29-4. And he's about two one hundred slower than Thomas at that first sector split, so he's right in the money. This is his 17th shootout, and again, it's the first shootout in New Zealand for Jack LeBrock. Nicely done through turn eight. He's able to get it back over to the left-hand side of the road and aggressively turn it in to turn nine. Give me the next split now, and slightly better by six one hundredths of a second on the Thomas Randall number in sector two. Makes the apex nicely at the top of turn 11 and was able to use all the road. It just had a little bit of oversteer. He was able to control it quite well. So on current estimate, he's gonna be right at the number that Thomas was able to achieve. Hard to know how he actually ventured through turn 12 there on that angle, but the lap looks like it's pretty solid and it is in fact. So he gets home by two one hundredths of a second over Thomas Randall with the 1 minute 27.28. Yeah, yeah. That looked like a really good quality lap. There was no obvious mistakes anywhere. He used all of the road nicely, flowed the car really well, and was able to use all of the exit space that you need at this layout. Jack, that looked like a pretty good lap. Yeah, it wasn't too bad, mate. I just, um, yeah, struggled to get it rotated up at turn 11 there. Just, uh, Really hurt my drive, drive off there, but yeah. Anyway, mate, it's great to be in the shootout. Awesome to be back here in NZ, and uh, yeah, let's see if we can get as much chaos in this, uh, this afternoon's race as what we did yesterday. Well done. Good luck this afternoon. Thank you, mate. Cheers. I'm not sure that everybody's going to be wishing no. for <laughs> some chaos. He's back, the champion, Brody Kostecki, with the number one on the car for TFH Hire and Erebus. Missing in action for two events and six races. He did a 1 minute 27.4116 in quality to get in here. 14th yesterday. He did cop a 15 second penalty for spearing James Courtney down at turn one in the wet. He's about to get his lap started. He's negotiating the final corner, turn 14. Gets it underway. So critical to be able to come out of there squarely. Runs it into turn one. Makes his marks there. up and over the curbing ever so slightly at turn two. So turn five is where we get our first timing reference on the exit of that. And the best time we've seen so far is Randall on a 29.3. A lot of understeer then, wasn't there, on the way down the hill into five. So much work that's got to be done in the middle complex. The drivers do not rest. In fact, a couple of them on Friday were talking about they could feel it in their necks with all of the left and right down there. It's busy. Precision is so critical to get the car in exactly the millimetre right position. So 29.30, best that we've seen so far. And Brody's faster than Thomas by eight one hundredths of a second in that first split. Turn 11 now, the hairpin. Get an understanding now of what he looks like in the second sector. Just a little bit away from his teammate there, but in terms of the cumulative, slightly up. So we just heard Jack LeBrock battling to get the car turned enough in the middle of turn 11. It looked like Brody got it around there a little better, but this braking phase into here is all important. How aggressive can you be across both curbs? And can you get it stopped and placed well for the final corner? He ran slightly wide, didn't he, off the back of 13 there. Use the exit apron on the final turn. Nice and the line. first car that we've seen in the 28s. In fact, his final sector was very strong. <laughs> yeah, big margin there. George Commons confirming 0.44 of a second in favour of Brody over his teammate, Jack LeBrock. So that was a fine performance. That last sector was electrifying. Brody's listening in the background. First and foremost, welcome back. It's great to have you back, Brody. Yeah, thanks guys. Made a little mistake in last sector, but uh, yeah, we'll see how it stacks up. Hopefully the sun comes out for me. 
<laughs> You're wishing for a bit of warmth. Thanks, Brody. Have a good run this afternoon. Thank you. That's a high quality lap. 0.4 of a second up the road on everybody. Well done. That's going to take some beating. Tim Slade in the wars yesterday, 38 years of age, living on the Gold Coast. Count up 23 for Newell on Racing and Premier Peter Zubris' team. 1 minute 27.3997, the number that he used to get into this shootout. Start line crash for him yesterday, where three into one didn't go, didn't get terribly far. And unfortunately, that car was damaged, but it was quick. And there's the group, Luda Lacroix, closest to camera. 435th supercar race today for Tim Slade as he fires on to the pit straight, greets the green flag. He's been in real form this weekend. Unfortunate start yesterday, but a nice job to be on the second row of the grid yesterday. And again, to make it into the Boost Mobile Top 10 shootout. Admirable performance, uses all of that inside curve. It rides that curve really nicely compared to most cars that we've seen there through the course of the weekend. Flows it over the top of turn four, gets it stopped. Change of surface down the bottom at turn five. Slightly down on Kostecki in sector one, but again, it's what the rear tire is like by the time you get down to turn 11 that will make or break this lap. 29.49 is the number for Tim Slade in sector one. It's about tenth and a half, tenth and three quarters slower than Brody's split. Now he's on the run down towards the hairpin. We will get our second reference in the braking area as he approaches this left-hander. 25.5 is about one tenth of a second away in the mid sector by comparison to Brody, but he's right there. Not terribly far away. Had to chase it on the way out of the hairpin, coming out of turn 11. And now it's about focusing on those shift lights and trying to find the millimetre perfect spot to put his foot on the brake pedal to sneak through the last chicane. Third gear initially and then getting it back to second for the right hander here at 13, where a couple of them have run and pushed slightly wide. They crimped in the final left hander at turn 14. And where does he drop in? It's a 27 3 for Tim Slade and position number four currently. Just didn't seem like it had enough tire, grip, and temperature in the early phase of that lap. Looked like it struggled slightly to get it to the apex. It rode the curb nicely there at turn two. Hey, Tim, Mark Scaife, were you happy with the car? Um, yeah, I mean, it didn't feel too bad. I expected more from the lap time, but um, yeah, it's, it's what it is. Good luck this afternoon. Well done. Thank you. It's always hard on those laps for one lap to understand how much tyre grip you have, isn't it? waiting for that to be telegraphed early in the lap. Sometimes it doesn't come. Our next runner, Brock Feeney, 21 years of age from the Gold Coast. He's already had three victories so far in the Repco Supercars Championship of 2024. He's in second place in the championship. He's 59 points behind his teammate, Will Brown. And he had a tough day yesterday. We've already detailed some of the challenges they had tyre pressure-wise. I spoke to him this morning. And he was a sitting duck out there as well yesterday. Whole new deal for him today. Totally different conditions. And he's been fast all year, fast last year. So the expectations will be high for this lap. This is his 14th shootout. He's only 21 years of age, remember. He had one pole in a shootout at Bathurst this year. Gets it up and over the top at turn four. That's an awkward curb through the fast right-hander and then trying to get it stopped to this low grip surface at turn five. And his first number is very good. In fact, it's one one hundredth of a second better than what the Brody Kostecki number was. So he's right on track, Brock Fooney, to go to the pointy end of the top 10 shootout. Using plenty of curb on the inside there. You can see it rattling across. He makes a little brake bias adjustment just to get that percentage trim front to rear right into this final complex. And he's gone quicker in the middle than everybody else as well. Kisses that first apex, lets it float up high, kisses the second apex. Nice. Came out the other side without any wheel spin in second gear. Now the focus is going to be about how far he can poke this thing into turn 12. That was the nicest exit out of turn 11 that we've seen so far. Drone gives us a bird's eye view of precisely the car positioning and he didn't use all of that exit space on the exit of turn 13. He's given himself the maximum amount of space to the flag yeah, through the final turn. Oh, he's done an excellent job. He's done a 26 uh, How's the tiny margin? One one hundredth of a second. Point one eight zero. Staggeringly tight. 
And he got it right straight away in both the first and second sectors. Brock, nice work. You're currently P1. That looked like a pretty handsome lap. Thanks, mate. Yeah, on my Delta, I, you know, I thought I probably wasn't going to get there, but I sent it in at the end of the lap. And Mate, I'm just pumped. Yesterday was really tough for us, so great to be back. <laughs> Having a good day. I can see it in your eyes. I can hear it in your voice. Yeah, well done, mate. nice work. <laughs> I am sharp. Thanks, guys. See you, mate. Have a good run this afternoon, Brock. Thanks, Benny. mate. Great lap. Very good lap. Ryan Wood is our next runner, and what a mighty performance from him yesterday. And a big cheer from the Kiwis when he crossed the line in fourth position. And he's driving for Mobile One Truck Assist Racing. 20 years of age from Wellington. 1 minute 27.2550 was the number that he achieved to be able to get into this shootout. Expectations also high for this young man for this afternoon. Let's see what he can produce on the run into turn one. As he was deep under brakes on the way in there and he's trailed the brake really nicely all the way to the apex. Compromises, sacrifices a little bit of road on the outside and then he actually turned it in so aggressively into turn two. It was a complete speedway car all the way through turn two and then it had a big slide again through turn three. It was a four-wheel drift at turn two. We're staying with him here to see what it looks like. It was a bit taily on the exit of five. First reference numbers come up. It's a 29.5. It's about three-tenths of a second away from what Brock Feeney was able to achieve as sector best so far. Turn eight. Pausing on the throttle, trying to keep in a steady state through the middle of the corner. Turn nine was challenging yesterday with rivers of water. Looks so much better out there today. And the run down towards the hairpin. We'll get a second indication of where the speed's at. Car looks a bit lively at the moment. Yeah. 25.7 for him in the mid sectors, about four tenths slower than Brock, who's been quickest in both the first and second sectors. He chased it under brakes and he's chasing it on the way out of the corner as well. Ryan Wood now on the run down the back straight, 250 kilometres an hour. Thinking about where he can get his foot on that middle pedal. Turns it in early towards 12. Hungry usage of the kerb on the left-hand oh, side. Ran wide. very wide. Super wide at 13 and has run it off onto the grass. Needs to hustle those still to the end because those behind him can still make a mistake and he gets it to the line and he's done a 28.5. Right, right. And all that would have happened is he would have seen his delta all the way down the straight and decided to try to make it up. And at 20 years of age, it's a really easy mistake to make. And I would much rather him do exactly what he did there, is try that hard, than not try hard enough and not get the best from it. Ryan, good effort, little mistake there at the last chicane. Yeah, it was a tough lap, obviously. Uh, first shoot out on the dry here, but really cool to do it at home. So thanks to the team for a fast car. Yeah, well done, mate. Good luck this afternoon. So just the Thanks, smallest Thank mistake, you can easily overrun that last chicane and that's what happened. Matt Payne is our next runner, it's his mate. But uh, the two of them, Ryan Wood and Matt, have been hanging out together. 21 years of age, Matt, from Auckland, car number 19, the Mustang. Penride Racing in the Grove team, 1 minute 27.1458. And he had a wild run yesterday, that is Stephen Grove, the owner of the team. David County is off to his right. First career pole for this man at the Australian Grand Prix. Currently sitting ninth in the championship after seven races. And he has been a flyer so far this year. And he'll be pumped to do some good stuff out there for the next 3.3 Ks in front of his home crowd. Certainly will. This is his ninth shootout, Matt Payne. We've seen some fantastic speed for him in differing conditions over the course of this weekend already. Nice flow through two and three up and over the kerb, gets it settled nicely, uses all of the road, parks the left-hand wheels right on the extremity of the turn-in point for turn five. And that number is only five hundredths of a second away from Feeney's best. See it just light up the rear tyres ever so slightly on the painted line and the curbing on the exit of turn five. The car nicely planted through the left-hander there at turn eight. Carrying great speed on the exit of turn nine. We jump on board with him again to see how things go in the braking area for the hairpin. Fastest middle sector. Strong by a margin. Let's it float up high in the middle of turn 11. Very Tiny nice. Tiny little bit of exit oversteer, but nothing that's going to hurt the stopwatch on the outside of turn 11. Now the run down towards the final complex. He's in the box seat to shake the number that Brock Feeney's achieved, which is a 1 minute 26.8. Makes his mark down there at 12. 
makes his secondary mark at turn 13. Hits the spot perfectly at the final corner. Now it's about advancing the throttle, opening the steering and using all of the road, and he's done it beautifully. <laughs> it's a provisional pole by the tiniest of margins. 0 0.01 is the margin for Matt Payne. He's got one one hundredth of a second up his sleeve over his rival Brock Feeney. How tight is that? Oh, Stephen Grove can't believe it. Grant McPherson, the engineer, watching in the garage there as well. So, beautiful work. And looking at some of the replay images here of him doing his thing. He's listening in the background. Hey, Matt, that was a very, very handsome lap and provisional pole so far. Well done. Yeah, thanks, guys. It was not too bad. Probably a little bit scrappy at the start. But, uh, yeah, managed to get the last six not too bad. So, pretty happy. Well done. Have fun this afternoon. Perfect. Thanks, guys. It's a great lap. 0 0.0126. Unbelievable. Now, Will Brown. Always a smile on that fella's dial. 25 years of age from Toowoomba in Queensland, car number 87, Chef Camaro, Red Bull Ampole Racing. He went out and had a look on the pit lane wall just prior to the shootout, just to check the conditions, see what it looked like out there. He got a bit of a raise from a couple of the other drivers when he went out there. So he's about to get his lap started. So one minute, 27.1220 for him. He started so well yesterday, but drifted with those tyre pressure gremlins. He was up on the front row of the grid. He is our championship leader. He's got 59 points up his sleeve at the moment, and those sleeves are working. They he were. chased that car into the first corner. He was really aggressive when he first applied the brake then, Crompo, and he battled to get it stopped, and he battled to get it turned in there. But it was really nicely done. He made the apex well, and he's got over that curve well there at four. He gets it stopped only just at five. A little bit of wheel spin on the way out of five, and that number, again, is almost exactly what Matt Payne did. That's one one-hundredth of a second away from the Matt Payne number, and only just slightly slower than his teammate, Brock Feeney. He's very aggressive. Picked a perfect positioning in turn eight. Yep. It just got away from him a little bit in the rear as he started to offer it up towards turn nine. What's the next time look like? He's about to get to that control line in sector two. He's done 25.4 and he is within reaching distance of the peak speed here at the moment. Matt Payne's still the fastest in the mid-sector by a tenth over this man on screen. Looked a little bit lively coming out of the hairpin that time. What's he got on the run down towards the final complex now? This is going to be right at the sharp end, as you would expect. Into the braking area at turn 12. All of the curb to the left-hand side was used then. It looked nice and neat between 13 and 14. This is going to be right there. What's it like at the line? Position number four. Didn't quite glue it together in the final sector. And a 26.9 was the number there for Will Brown. How's the margin? It's got a little bit loose. 14 hundredths of a second across the top four cars. Might have just cost him a whisker of time at 11. Maybe yeah. just, but uh, gee, what a quality lap. How's this? He's got the left side of the car position where you're in a typical road car, you'd have the right, right side, side of the car. <laughs> Very nice. Hey, Will, Mark Scaife, how was that, mate? Yeah, it's pretty close times out there. I probably didn't get out of turn 11 as good as I wanted to, so lost a little bit of time there, but uh, overall still not a bad starting spot for the Sarvo. Did you just hear Croppo say that? <laughs> no, no, I didn't, but uh, I think you could all see where it went wrong there. <laughs> well done, mate. Good luck this afternoon. <laughs> Cheers, thank you. I thought he was using your advice. Yeah, I doubt it. <laughs> Chaz Boston. He has been electrifying so far this year and this weekend. Lost that right rear in the race yesterday and crueled what was a big, strong run. What can he do for us this afternoon? He's done a 1 minute 27.12. Third in the championship after the first seven races. And this car's been pretty strong at Bathurst, pretty strong at the Grand Prix in Melbourne. Ooh. And is it going to be strong enough here? He absolutely threw it over the top of the curbing at turn four there. Most experienced person in the field in terms of shootouts. This is a 60 second shootout. Now he's two tenths of a way, a uh, second away over the first sector. And a bit of that would have been that sliding that we saw back there at turn four. So is it too lively in the rear? We're going to get a second indication very shortly. Clobbered the curb on the inside there at turn nine through the right hander. Now we get another indication as to whether this lap is on target. He's three tenths of a second away in the mid sector. It doesn't look like it's there at the moment. He's busy in that cockpit trying to get that car. Look at it sliding just on the exit of turn 11. Yeah, it's too oversteery. We saw Ryan Wood's car very oversteery also. And for Chaz, it hasn't been able 
to have enough rear grip to put this lap together smoothly. He's had the Tiger by the tail the whole time. Gets through there well. Final apex nicely. Nice throttle progression. And the numbers are 2753. And that puts him just ahead of his teammate in eighth. So they just have not been able to make that car hook up straight away. And that's now the same as car two. His young Kiwi teammate, same thing. Hey, Chaz, looked like it had too much oversteer. Uh, had a lot of going on then, Scapey. <laughs> it was a lot going on. You had the tiger by the tail by the look. Yeah, I don't really have much worse right now, mate. It was a uh, pretty handful, pretty handful. Just couldn't switch the tire on, so just one of our killer heels at the moment. Yeah, all of the best, mate. Well done, and good luck this afternoon. Uh, wasn't a very good job, so no well done here, mate. Next up, we're going to see Anton Di Pasquale, car number 11, 28 years of age from the Gold Coast, originally from Werribee, just outside Melbourne. A Mustang, Shell V Power Racing. He was the quickest man in quali. 1 minute 27.0928. He gets his lap underway. So can he snatch the provisional pole away from Matt Payne? And if he can do it, it'll be his second of the championship season. He runs it up very high in the middle of turn number one, gets it in very deep, deep Pasquale, and pushed pretty high and wide. Is that going to cost him? Great to see these guys back on the podium yesterday for the Shell V Power Racing team with both he and Will Davison getting onto the podium second and third. Ooh. Uses a ton of space out and over the top of turn four. Almost ran it out of rope, brought a tiny little bit of mud up. It's not really dust out there at the moment. Yeah, it was wider than anybody else that we've seen. We saw Chaz out there sideways, but not right to the extremity of where he made the wheel contact with the dirt. Now, he's only a tenth away, Cropo, so even with that slide, it's not far away. He's in touch, and he is squeezing. Nice and job through turn nine. And he was very good in qualifying in this sector. Second intermediate coming up now. It's a 25-4. He's one-tenth of a second away from Matt Payne. He tucks it down the inside line at turn 11. Doesn't let it float up high at all. It came out of there on rails in second gear, fully planted on the road, no wheel spin. Now it's a case of focusing on this brake reference and trying to get a tidy run through 12, 13 and 14. Doesn't use all of the approach space. Feeds second gear into it at 13. Little short, sharp blip of the throttle and out the other side to greet the control line. Is it going to be strong enough? Not quite. Position number four. Matt Payne has another boost mobile pole position. <laughs> How's the New Zealand stories this weekend? Andre Heimgartner winning yesterday. And for Matt Payne to be on pole today, the Kiwis rejoicing with the performance of their local stars. And what about those margins there, Neil? 0.14 separates the top five cars. So Anton Di Pasquale ending up in position number four with a 26.9. Listening in the background, give us the debrief. What did you think, Anton? Uh, yeah, mate, it's pretty fun. Um, super difficult to get the thing going for the first lap. So um, had a few moments, but started on the second row, so we're happy with that. Well and, done. Uh, keep for a good race. All right, look forward to it. Have fun this afternoon. So he ended up with a 26.9, and the peak number was a 26.8. Yeah. And the point you were making there is just how ridiculously close it is. It's confirmed on the graphic for us here and now. Matt Payne, Brock Feeney, that's row number one. Brody Kostecki back in business, row two, position three. Anton Di Pasquale just had the conversation with him. He's out of position four, row two. Then it's Will Brown and Jack LeBrock, Thomas Randall and Tim Slade, Chaz Mostert and Ryan Wood, the teammates. They'll occupy positions nine and ten with everybody from 11 to 24 sorted out in qualifying earlier on today. So in reality, you've got a tenth of a second, a whisker over, covering the top five or six cars. Pretty amazing. Boost Mobile pole, though, goes to Matty Payne for the second time in 2024. We've already had five drivers generate a pole. He's had one earlier in the year. Career first for him at the Grand Prix in Melbourne. He's caught the bug, and it's well and truly alive again this weekend. Elated men and women in that team at Penrite Racing. A grin from ear to ear. Brendan Grove and Stephen Grove are there to celebrate, as is Greg Murphy. Great 
Just how's the energy with this crowd as well, mate? Isn't it just fantastic? Congratulations. There is the check. Your second one, your first in a shootout. What a place to get your first shootout pole position. Yeah, it's unbelievable, isn't it? Um, yeah, managed to, to get the lap together there. Really crucial to warm the tyres up as it's, it's so cold today. So managed to do a good job there and just put together a pretty clean lap, I thought. So uh, its margins are so close, but what a way to uh, what a way to start our Sunday. We, we executed in qualifying. We, we executed yesterday in qualifying, just didn't quite have the luck on our side. But today we've, we've definitely had the luck and it's uh, it's really good so far. What does it mean, mate? I mean, here, this uh, amazing event, first time at Topol Motorsport Park to have supercars here. This crowd is phenomenal, mate. You have got so much support. How's that pressure? How are you feeling the pressure? Yeah, it's, um, man, like even, even on the in-lap from the shootout lap there, I just saw, you know, along the whole fence, everyone clapping. It's, it's, uh, it's unbelievable. I've never experienced something like it and it's, it's something that, you know, it means a lot to me for all, for all the fans, you know, wearing our merchandise, supporting me and, and the team. It's, it's crazy. I never thought, you know, something like this would happen in my life, but it's, uh, some things you dream of, right? It's, it's here. We're here today. We just got to execute this afternoon and, uh, yeah, get that race win. Well, taking the moment, mate. You should be very proud. All of New Zealand, I'm sure, is right behind Matthew Payne this afternoon for race two here at uh, Topor. So, great. Good luck, mate. Congratulations. There's a really good vibe down here at Erebus off the back of that session. High fives are plenty because yourself and your teammate, Jack LeBrock, are starting uh, third and sixth for this one later today. So nicely done. You were flying under the radar this weekend a little bit. Yeah, it's been good. The TFH High Rocket's been, um, been coming pretty good today. Like, we, uh, I probably underdrove it a little bit then. Didn't get the last sector quite right. The first, first part of the lap was definitely a good, uh, good step forward for us. So, yeah, we're happy. It's great to see BK as well uh, back here, put it in P3. So, uh, yeah, fingers crossed we can get it, uh, one of these cars or both of them up on the podium today. How are you boys going as teammates? Yeah, it's been good. We're working really well. It's actually, it's been great to have Brody back and um, just, yeah, learning, learning from him. He's obviously the, the best at the moment um, coming off last year and to try and learn and understand how he goes about his business is uh, it's pretty cool. So it's uh, definitely very different to what I've, I suppose, experienced before. He's um, very in-depth with his feedback and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, loving it, trying to pick up as much as I can and, um, yeah, trying to prove the number nine rocket as well. Super solid top five yesterday. Can you do it again today? Yeah, hopefully, mate. Yeah, I think we're, we're starting in the right spot. I think we probably, well, for myself, felt like we probably had a better race car than we did one lap car. So, yeah, fingers crossed that translates into today. It's a couple of days later since the last on a dry track with it. But uh, see what we get, mate. All right, mate. Good luck. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you. Great story there for Erebus Motorsport to have both of their drivers inside the top six. But this is pretty cool to be down here. We've been uh, spying on the Penrite Racing Team all weekend. Thanks to them for having us and to be here to live that moment as they celebrated another pole position for their young stars. Pretty cool. Oh, I thought he was going to come in and join us, but he's... No, 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 come back here, young man. You're not done yet. <laughs> Here he comes. Oh. <laughs> you don't get away that easily. Nice check. Yeah, it's very cool. Very cool. Another, Another pole. Another so, one. Yeah, and Talpo, it's unbelievable. We managed to, to get the lap together there at the end. And, um, yeah, margins are so close, though. Like, it's thousands of a second around this track. It's very slow speed, which I think makes the margins very close. So. Yeah, second career pole, but you're first in a shootout. So tell us the difference about that. I mean, there's a, probably a bit more pressure to do it when it's a shootout scenario. Yeah, for sure. I think, you know, you have, you have everyone else going before you also, and then you have yourself going sort of towards the end. So it's, uh, it definitely is difficult, you know, especially when you get out of the car after being sort of fourth in the queue and then... You're sort of trying to see everyone else if they're going faster or not. It's a bit nerve-wracking. You're just hoping they make a mistake or something like that. So, yeah, it's unbelievable. So proud of the team. You know, we've done an awesome job, especially the last sort of two months. We've really been coming on. So it's awesome to finally execute here, but job's, job's still not over. Could you hear the crowd out there? Yeah, I could, especially on the in-lap. You know, like, you, you, I definitely took the time to look along the back straight and Everyone's just cheering and clapping. It's, it's, I've never had this support like this. It's unreal. I'm just so, so thankful for everyone. Does this one feel a little bit more special given you had provisional pole yesterday and then that shower came through the shootout? You didn't get a fair crack at it. So this one, to get redemption so quickly, does that make it more special? Definitely. You know, this, this today was a bit more fair, I guess you could say, having a dry track for the whole shootout. So it's definitely helped. You know, I knew that if I just get the right tyre temp, it, uh, it, would, it would make the lap a lot easier. So... Yeah, we did, we did the job there. Still had to do the job on the lap. Uh, it's very difficult around here, but, yeah, this one definitely feels more special. Also that it's at Talpo too, so I've always... I really wanted to do well this round, so, 
Yeah, it's, it's a great way to start our Sunday. We're on board here with you. You were fastest in the second and final sectors. Just tell us how the car felt there. Where is it strongest? Yeah, well, it actually felt really good through the final part of the lap. It, uh, it sort of I didn't quite have the rear tyres up at the start, so I was a little bit marginal uh, through the first couple of sectors, you know, micro sectors, mm -hmm. just for drive, so it was a bit tough. but car definitely came on towards the end of the lap and managed to just execute that. That final chicane is, is really quite difficult, so it, uh, it's always good to get through there clean and get a nice run onto the front straight. Did you make any changes to the car from qualifying to the shootout? No, no changes. Just four green tyres, fuel and uh, a good warm-up lap was, uh, was the right recipe. <laughs> Alright, so let's look ahead to the race this afternoon. Hopefully the conditions stay as they are. What are you thinking in terms of the race car and getting off the line cleanly this afternoon? Yeah, it's actually interesting here because the new seal from the last corner actually sort of stops right after the finish, well, the start line for us. So yeah. you get a really good launch, but then you get to the old service and then you disperse into a whole bunch of wheel spins. So that's really difficult to negotiate, especially starting off first because you really don't get that new seal advantage. But it's going to, yeah, the race is going to be difficult. Hopefully it stays dry for us. Looks like there could be a couple of showers coming in, uh, but we, we know tyre dig's going to be really big around here. So it's going to be new for all of us. Obviously, it was wet yesterday. Didn't really get a feel for it. So it's going to be very interesting come the afternoon. Tell us how do you approach that? Because not a, every, everyone does have basically no dry running information over a race run. So how how do you think about that going into a race? How do you process that? You obviously can't learn anything yesterday. What's the focus going into the first stint of this one? Uh, it's really just feeling out the tyres and sort of feeling how much you've got to give and how much is, is getting taken away after every lap. I think it's going to be all about managing and figuring out where you sort of sit in that first stint towards how much dig there actually is. Um, and then the last two stints is going to be about just managing what, what the car is and what you've got. Uh, it's going to be really tight. I know there's a lot of other good cars around here, so we're going to have to really be on our toes, especially in that first stint to try and work out what we've got. But uh, yeah, we're going to be pushing. Well, Matty, congratulations. First poll here at Topor, second uh, for the year. You've got a big afternoon coming up. All the very best. Very big. I better get to it. I better <laughs> yeah. leave you guys to do <laughs> your job. Right. Go to work. Get to your homework. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. Uh, let's chase up a couple of other stories after the top 10 shootout. Great rebound for Brock Fenny standing by for us with Rihanna. Thanks, Jess. Yeah, huge rebound for you, Brock. You said yesterday, really, really tough day. You sit here now, P2 on the grid for this afternoon's race. I mean, where do you put that speed down to after yesterday? <laughs> Yeah, it was a pretty tough day for us yesterday. I felt like a, a fair bit on my side of, of performance-wise, making some mistakes and that. But to bounce back today, I was just happy to do a, a decent lap, to be honest. Where we ended up was where it was. But I felt like myself again out there. I felt been struggling a bit this weekend. So it's great to have a good result. Um, and I think we've got a fast race car. So hopefully we can move one spot forward. I know the conditions are so totally different today than what they were yesterday. Do you feel that you guys are suited better to, to what's out there today? I think we learned a lot yesterday about the wet conditions. I think at times in the wet we were really competitive. <laughs> Obviously, you probably saw us coming back at a million miles an hour at other points. So um, we've learned a lot from yesterday. Um, as I said yesterday, I just tried to completely forget about that race, learn from it, but um, move forward for today. And the start after what you saw yesterday, how will you tackle yeah. that? Yeah, I mean, Will ended up in first, still at turn one, but I was pretty messy up the front. The hard thing is on the front row, it goes from a good surface straight to an old surface. So I wouldn't have been too disappointed if Anton got me there. But um, look, hopefully I can get a good start and, and have a good battle for these Kiwi fans. Thanks, Brock. I'll let you finish your lunch. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers, guys. Good to see a smile back on his face. And it's got to be an almighty launch this afternoon between those two off the front row. It is tricky to get the start here, given the, the surface change. What advice are you going to give to those two blokes to try and nail it this afternoon? Well, it's funny. They both went straight there. They talked about the, yep. the challenge from launching from the front row, so they're both acutely aware of it. I mean, I think you really have to set your throttle for the second phase of the start because it's easy to get greedy and load it up and have a great launch for the first five metres, but then, like Matt Mayne said, you're first in the wheel spin and the rest of the field stay on that new surface for longer and get momentum going. So, potentially, that's what we saw yesterday with Tim Slay where he launched off the second row. So... How they manage that will be challenging because they want to get clear air. They want to get to the first corner first. So we heard Brock Fink say that. I want to get to the first corner first. So it's um, it's going to be something that we will keep an eye on. We saw it had drama yesterday in the wet. I think it'll be more evident in the dry today. Uh, so really managing that first phase, get the launch with the car will launch hard, 
but then just nice and patient in the second phase of the launch. Well, Contrary and Dreddy United have got a bit more work to do in the race this afternoon. Both Chaz Mossett and Ryan Wood qualifying ninth and 10th for this one. We saw Wood have a bit of a moment. He was really pushing hard. What is the difference between their cars today in the dry versus what we've seen in the dry running we've had Friday and then the early qualifying yesterday? Oh, with Wood, with this moment, he really, he, he basically sent it at the end of the back straight and the car did not stick. His car looked nicer in the lap than Chaz Mostert's. Mostert's car looked very taily, so just carried too much speed across the first two curbs in the back chicane, and the car would not turn, and then obviously dumped all the lap time right at the end of the lap. I mean, for Ryan Wood also, there's probably a little bit of pressure there, home race. Only his second ever shootout, first one in the dry, so wanting to have a crack, and he's that type of character, he's going to lick the stamp and send it. <laughs> so he's probably learnt a little lesson there, has Ryan Wood, but for Chaz, Right from the start of the lap, the rear of the car just did not hook up whatsoever. That's the worst that car has looked all weekend. So um, there's a bit of head scratching to go on in that garage, particularly on Chaz's side. And we heard from him after the on the lap, talking to Mark and Neil. He was there was no happy Chaz in that car at the end of that one. So they got some work to do because you do not need a car that's tailly going into a 60 lap race around here at Topo. That's a new motto for Walk and Shore and Treaty United, isn't it? Lick it and send it. <laughs> we hear that quite a lot from them. Uh, but for Ryan Wood, what an incredible weekend it's been for him so far. He finished just off the podium yesterday. He showed um, some real brilliance, particularly in wet conditions here. So for more on him and his meteoric rise as he begins his supercars career, let's go to Larco. Yeah, when a good one comes along, Jess, I reckon it's really important. Like Matt Payne, we did him yesterday, didn't we? I reckon it's important we all try and understand. And, you know, you want to get a bit of a, I don't know, a sense of the persona. What's he like? I can tell you hand on heart, I really like Ryan Wood. There's just something. He's got some spunk about him. He's got a little bit of attitude. He's a fun guy to be around. And he can drive. So let's just delve in. So he's one of this group of Kiwis that is, are emerging. So good news for the future. So when we just have a brief look at his career, he was born in Wellington, so clearly a Kiwi kid. Uh, finished third in the 2020 or the 21 Toyota 86 series, so that got him on his way. Then he was second, uh, second in the Poor Sprint Challenge Australia a couple of years later. But where I want to get to, what really made the big difference is Super 2. And I say this about a lot of drivers. If you want to prevail and succeed and have people looking at you to come into our main game, you've got to do well in Super 2. And he finished third there. He had some race wins, which was important. I think he was the pole champion. So when we spoke to the team about Ryan, I wanted to ask... Carl Foe. This guy's worked with plenty of drivers, clever engineer, Brucey Stewart. Well, we know he loves Ryan. But I said, Carl, Carl, tell me something. It's funny because he said nearly exactly what Alistair McVeigh in a Penrite Racing told me about Matt Payne yesterday. The words were nearly identical. Woody has an innate feel of what the car is doing. Now, what that really means is race drivers, we use our sensory perceptions, our muscles, our auditory. Um, where our internal G meter is. And all that stuff feeds into your brain and tells your feet and your hands what to do. Some of us have to work really hard at that stuff and think really hard about it. Others, Peter Brock, Jim Richards, Craig Lowndes, Payne and Wood have got that thing that drivers all want and some will never have. So watching that shootout, right, with Woody making that little error, what you've got to do, and I saw a little bit of this with Anton Di Pasquale early in his career, full of this natural talent, but they've got to do the learning bit, and the expectation comes great, but you've got to find a way to do it. Scott McLaughlin was great at it. He was a true talent, and then he worked really hard. He was like a sponge, and that's what you've got to do. So Ryan's got to take from that shootout that mistake so he doesn't do that again. He's got to know when to lose a battle to win a war. He's got to know how to manage a car with tyre degradation. He's got to know about start, stopping on the mark in pits. There's so many things you need to know, but we get excited when we see he's got the raw talent bit. And we saw great evidence of that yesterday, finishing fourth in that race in the wet. So when you're in those conditions, not many drivers can do, no matter how experienced you are, what he did. And he was doing what he did because of that. He has a great feel of where his tyres are and where the grip of the road is. Now, I know that sounds a little silly, but when drivers can feel that, and Carl said to me, he said he can search and find the grip like that. That's really hard to do. 
That stuff is not learnt stuff. My point is the other stuff is learnt stuff. And the guys and girls that race cars that don't have that innate quality work really hard at learning the stuff they can learn. So if you don't do that, they'll trounce you every time over race duration. So I'm excited about both Payne and Wood and seeing what they can do in terms of maturing as young drivers, doing the learning bit, and then the world, the racing world, is their oyster. It absolutely is, Larko, and I don't think Ryan Wood is too far away from his best ever result in Supercars, which would be a podium. He was on for it potentially yesterday. He's just got to keep working hard to try and put himself in a position to do that. And maybe it's this afternoon, Gartana, because we just heard Matt Payne say they're expecting more rain mid-race this afternoon, and Ryan was so good in the wet here yesterday, as was Chaz. How do... They try and get themselves in the fight this afternoon. Uh, well, they're going to have to do something a little bit different with strategy because clearly they're both out of position. They've both got fast cars, wet or dry, the Welcome Australia and United Ford. So uh, they'll, they'll be watching the weather forecast like hawks, trying to figure out, is that rain real? Is that going to come? Because it is so hard to predict the weather here in New Zealand. So they need to get their head around that. And then do they do something different with strategy? But the problem with that is you don't know. We don't know. We're going into this unknown now. No one's done a race run. No one's done more than eight laps on a tyre around here. And you're going to need to do 18 or 20 each stint to make this strategy work. So you'll be very brave to stop early in the first stint because that just makes the two, second two stints much, much longer. So they put themselves in a corner, but they'll be looking to do something different. Lots of homework to do before we get race eight of the championship underway. That is what we are counting down to here at Topor. Still to come in our coverage today, we remember this man, Kiwi legend Jason Richards. We miss him and we think of him every time we come racing here in New Zealand. We're also going to follow Greg Murphy around for a day and see what he gets up to. That should be pretty interesting. Coming up next on track, the Central Muscle Cars are out in action. And don't forget as we head to this very quick break, Nikita Zhu is back in the ring next Next Wednesday from 7 p.m., the most entertaining boxer in the country defends his Australian title live only on main events. It's the blood that gets to me. That's what I love, seeing that blood. Nikita, the Australian champion. Everybody on this card is going to put on a hell of a show. Brilliant exhibition of boxing. You're not quite right, Nikita Zub. <laughs>